Good afternoon. How are you? How you doing? Good. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I like this kind of sound. Yeah. First thing is, uh, thank you so much for coming. I'm really sorry about all those empty seats. And a lot of those people are going to miss some fun here today because everybody going to sing and play and dance and all kinds of things. I'm very happy to be here because you are interested in music. If you are interested in music, we are friends already. We are all pal, yeah. And, uh, I always say that I would like to start saying something real quick that uh, music saved my life. Literally. <laughs> and um, all the way, music saved my life. I grew up in the middle of nowhere, the island of Cuba. My family was so poor, you cannot believe it. I have to quit the school when I was in fifth grade, no more school. That would work when I was 10 years old. And uh, to help my family, and then to help my family to put some floor in the house because we have dirt in the house. And um, that's a good ringing, man. <laughs> This is a good one. I hear all kinds of them, but this this one is <laughs> and it's a kind of dark a little bit. <laughs> and it's good, it's good, it's good. I hope everybody now and you know what? Yeah. Let me do a couple of things. The first thing I want to do is Take a photo of you. <laughs> yeah, can you smile at them, please? <laughs> Thank you. And now I'm gonna turn off the fan. <laughs> Thank you. you should, now you say my butt. <laughs> okay. I was talking about yeah how how I started the music. I don't know. That was so many years ago. I have no idea. But I was so, you know, strong in my decision that I want to be a musician no matter what. My father was a car mechanic. Nobody in my family was involved. Oh shit, that's another one now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, yeah, and uh, my, uh, my family, my father was a car mechanic. Nobody in my family was involved with the music at all, before or after me. I was the black chip of the family, of course, yeah. And when I mentioned I want to be a musician, everybody gave me a funny look, you know. Everybody gave me a weird look to say, musician? What are you talking about? You're out of your mind? Musician's a bunch of drunk people and alcohol and they're always broke. The word, right? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, it's all the depends, you know. They're musician and musician. And then artists, which is something a little in a different scale, a different level. And um, later on, when they find out that uh, my desire was so strong and irrevocable, can I say that? Revocable? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that's a big thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about my English. I know my English sucks. Yes, I, I know that. But that's the only one I have. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know what? I, I was 41 years old when I get to the country. At that age, it's very difficult to start trying to learn a new language. It's very difficult. I learned also here that people say it's very difficult to teach a new trick to an old dog. I was all ready when I start to learn a new trick. But anyway, if you don't understand anything I say because my pronunciation is horrible, just let me know and I'm going to try to ask somebody to say the word again. <laughs> One of the first things I did here in the U.S. when I came was a 
was a, something like this, but a very official master class. I have to do two hours of master class in the university in Chicago, so in Chicago. Oh my goodness, um, my English, you know, 25 years ago, 26 years ago, it was a lot worse than now. And then I was trying to learn a couple of words, you know, to say here and there. And then one of the words I choose to say was the word focus. <laughs> yes. That's what I say now, but at that time, it sounded completely different. And then, when I, when I finished my thing, an old lady came to me and said, Mr. Sandoval, may I speak with you? I said, yes, how can I help you, lady? I said, listen, you came here to this university. I am a professor here of English and that and that. And I said, I said oh my goodness, what I did now? And she said, you have to be very careful in the way you pronounce the word focus because everybody understood something very dirty and the people was laughing and that's not appropriate to say in the school. I said, I'm so sorry because, you know, this is the English I don't have. That is not my fault. It's their fault because they invited me to come here. And they knew my English was soft. They knew that. <laughs> what do you think? I'm going to learn from one day to another. No, I know I'm a genius. Okay, but anyway, that was part of their story. By the way, they paid me well there, <laughs> even with that broken English. And, um, of course, I never prepare any of those class and never have an agenda or any kind of plan to talk about this or that or that. Because I don't want to talk about things you are not interested on. If you're interested in something, I'm going to be more happy to talk to you as much or as long as you wish. If you are not interested, that means you're going to feel and boring, and me too, because when I see people, oh, I can't wait this guy finish this BS things, you know, I'm sick and tired to see that. Yes, and uh, that also made me feel uncomfortable. I prefer if you lost the interest, it's okay, we're going to go to the bar in the corner and have a Diet Coke. <laughs> yes, because I'm going to talk about that too. No drugs, no alcohol. I'm sorry, I'm a kind of boring jazz musician. I never touch any kind of shit. Zero. Never, ever smoke marijuana or any of those things. No drugs. Zero. Alcohol, maybe a glass of wine. <laughs> Maybe a glass of wine once in a while, you know. We go with my wife for dinner or something, maybe half a little glass of wine. That's it. Food, yes. <laughs> it's very obvious, you see my belly. I strongly believe that food is the first priority in life. When I'm full, man, I'm so happy. I feel in a great mood for anything. When I'm hungry, I hate myself. I want to punch myself in the face, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. When I'm hungry, I don't, I don't like to I don't, I don't, I recommend nobody get close to me because I get so disgusting. <laughs> and um, I mentioned my wife, talking about my wife. Uh, we're celebrating our 40th wedding anniversary. <laughs> She's crazy. And you know, she, she told me the other day, you say, honey, you promised you're going to take me to China for the 40th wedding anniversary. I said, I say that. She said, yes, you promised me you're going to take me to China. I said, okay, if I did that, I will. And then she said, and what are we going to do for the 50th anniversary? I said, I get back and pick you up. <laughs> you didn't get it because you were still. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You you have a good vision of thing. I thought you were blind. Or something. Okay. No, you're not. You're not Jose Feliciano. No. Yeah, Jose is a dear friend. You know, 
but it's a little crazy. I was with him once and then we came out of the TV show or something. Then he was on the way to the car. I was a late there, that's a true story. He was screaming, I said, Jose, Jose, I love you, I love you, and I love your eyes. And he said, are you sure? I'm gonna give you one. I stopped him. I said, no, no, Jose. He was on the way to take one of his glass eyes or whatever. Oh, you know, that was ugly. But, but you know, funny, he, that's his sense of humor. Okay, uh, this is my introduction to make you feel a little relaxed, enjoy, have fun. What's the word? Food, water is good too, you know. Yeah, I drink a lot of water. Now I would love to concentrate and start to uh, answer questions. Any kind of question you could have about anything, I don't care. About my private life, how much, how big is my belly? <laughs> Yeah, when uh, you know what the color of my socks. Oh yeah, it's a kind of uh, I don't know, yellow or whatever. <laughs> um, any kind of question, whatever. You Please go ahead. Why the trumpet? Why did you pick the trumpet? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you how, what, how that happened. In the village where I grew up, they put together like a kind of a little march band, you know, a bunch of kids from the area. And it's a village, not even a town where I grew up, a village. And, um, and then we joined that thing and we started to learn how to read music and so on, so fresh and things. And, and um, they gave me to try different things. One of the things they gave me the first was a bass drum. The marching thing with the bass drum. I said, man, no, this is too heavy. I don't know. I know he had to lift weight or any of those things. No way, no, I hate this. They gave me a trombone later on. No, uh, uh, I don't want to work in the McDonald's. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. And then <laughs> they give me the fruit and the fruit. Okay, this is said, No, man, I don't want that. Okay, long story, a little longer. I start to look to the trumpet in the corner of my eyes and say, Wow, I think that's the one I would, the one I would like to try. Then I talked to the professor. By the way, he was a clarinet player and he was trying to teach everyone one of the band, all kind of instrument. But he didn't know anything about trombone or trumpet or, or anything, or percussion or whatever, you know, he was a clarinet player. And then when I talked to him about saying, Maestro, I think I, I know already what instrument I would love to learn. I said, which one? Finally, which one? I said, the trumpet. I said, I'm sorry, man, we have three trumpets and we'll give it away already. No trumpet left. I said, oh my goodness. And then the day after I came back and I said, Maestro, what about if I find the trumpet? You let me play in the band and you teach me something? He said, okay, you find one, it's okay. And my aunt bought me a pocket cornet. I think it was making in Russia or Czechoslovakia, one of those places. Man, what an ugly instrument. <laughs> and it was so out of tune and completely, you know, piece of garbage. And, um, that's what, that's what I got. And then I went to see an old man in my village. He got some kind of reputation to be a good trumpet teacher. Good trumpet teacher. I went there, it was a very cranky old man. Bastard, he was a horrible, a horrible person. May the evil kick him in hell because he, for sure, he didn't went to heaven. Listen to this. I was 10 years old. I went to see him. This is a true story. That's not, I know I'm improvising. I went to see him and said, Maestro, I want to play in the little band and this and that. And I want you 
teach me how to do something with this. Or you say, play something. And I said, I never try it. I have no idea how to. He said, I say, play something. <laughs> I make a couple of ugly noise there, something horrible. I didn't have a clue. I think I put my piece in the side like this, something with my ear. <laughs> Whatever, you know. And then after a few seconds, that bastard told me, you know what? Put it back in the cage. And let me give you a piece of advice. Don't make me waste my time and don't waste your time. Try to do something else. You're never going to make it on this end. You don't tell that to a boy. You don't tell that to nobody. Because God probably, probably is the only one who really could say such a thing. Down there, nobody. Because you never know what a human being could have in their brain. What kind of commitment this person could have in any kind of profession. Nobody can figure it out what is going to happen in six months or six years. You could be surprised. Like a lot of people were surprised with Bill Gates or a lot of people they have some problems in school. You know, now they come back and bought the school. <laughs> Unfortunately that old man died right away. He didn't get, gave, gave me a chance to come back and play a private recital for him because I was planning to play in front of his house every single day until he passed away. <laughs> but he passed away, man, and I couldn't do it. I'm so sorry. But to finish the story, I was walking back to my house. It was a long way, and I was crying all the way. I was crying all the way. When I get there, I scream at the top, top of my lung. I scream a dirty word about that old man. And then I get my little cornet. I went under the mango tree. And um, I was playing until blood started to come out of the back of my lips. That was my cure. And from that day, I say, you know what? I'm going to let him know that he was wrong. And that was 50, I don't know how many, 50, 66, 56 years ago. Every single day, I remember that guy. And all, 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 every time I played a good note, I always dedicated to him. <laughs> yeah. I hope they got some speaker there on hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where he belong, yeah, of course. Okay, I know. I didn't answer your question yet, but I will. You know what the trumpet called my attention? Because of the sound. And still, you know, I love the piano. To be honest, I enjoy it a lot, a lot more playing the piano. I mean the piano, not electric piece of keyboard. I don't like those things. I love the real piano. I enjoy playing the piano a lot more than the trumpet. But the sound of the trumpet is what really gained my heart, you know. Because I strongly believe the trumpet is probably the only instrument that could in the whole orchestra could whisper as soft as a violin, very soft, and could go from zero to 60 in three seconds, you know? And uh, you could go from extremely soft sound to the loudest in the whole orchestra because no other instrument could sound louder than trumpet. In the, I mean, in the regular symphony orchestra. I'm not talking about a rock and roll guitar with the tower speakers or something like that, no. But in the symphony orchestra, full symphony orchestra, no other instrument could compare with the amount of sound of a trumpet. Of course, when you got a sound, if you are a kind of trumpet, 
forget about it. <laughs> but I mean, the I'm talking about the instrument. The instrument don't put any, this is the bottom line of my answer, the, the trumpet don't put any limitation in your way of expression. You're going to be able to express your feeling 100% with a trumpet. If you're angry, if you're happy, if you're in love, if you hate someone, you know, you can really go for it and express your feeling without the impediment of the instrument blocking your... The piano don't have that kind of fence. For example, the piano you, you cannot do... is closer to the inflections and the sound of the human voice, which is also it's a, a lot more natural, you know, it's a kind of something you're going to be uh, like singing, like talking. When you play the melody, for example, Flexibility. 
What, what about the quality of your tongue? What about your pedal tongues? What about this? What about that? That? What about your phrasing? What about your finesse of the termination of phrases? It's the love thing you can work on it. And, um, and that's always has been my goal. You have to cover a bunch of different aspects, different things. Tongue and flexibility, long tongue. When I was young, man, the old timers, that's the only thing they thought about. Long tongues. And then you say, my actor said, long tongues. No, but I also had a long tongue. They I swear God, man, that was the only thing they thought about. The only thing. And the last 20 or 30 years or something, I never hear any guy talking about long tongues. What the heck? Still the same thing, same instrument, same everything. We need to do long tongues. They're boring, they're tedious, they're, yeah, everybody know what they are. But I don't believe nobody invented another way to make your sound pretty and pure and nice and under control because the sound in any and listen to this the younger sound in any instrumentalist is the most important thing you could play a couple of million notes with the wrong sound nobody care you play one single note with the right sound and everybody gonna say wow you you really want that kind of wow you don't you don't want the other one to say wow <laughs> wow you don't you don't need you don't want that one you really want make like, people really appreciate your effort and your dedication to improve the quality of a sound that's the first priority, first priority. I got a lot of problems when I was teaching in Florida, you know, you know, for 19 years. I got a lot of students who came to the, uh, the Dean School of Music Johnson complaining that I was trying to teach them classical music. And then when they told me, oh, we have some problem here, the students say you was teaching them classical music. I always say the same thing and say, I never ever talk about any style of music with that person because he's not prepared. He's a completely ignorant in terms of music. He has to be in love with music first. And then whatever you could learn is good. Don't uh, diminish the importance of any learning process. Uh, music is only one, a good one. Doesn't matter who wrote it, when, where, how, or you are green, yellow, or purple. It's a good piece of music, it's a good piece of music. My favorite composer probably is Sergei Rachmaninoff. Somebody gonna say, what? You? You're Cuban? You're salsa? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my favorite composer is Sergei Rachmaninoff, and I listen to him almost every single day. And I mean his recording, I got in my phone everything whoever ever recorded of Rachmaninoff, all the piano pieces, all the etude, all the sonatas, and all the symphonies and piano concertos, everything. I listen to that a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Because I love music and I enjoy so much those melodies, those wonderful lines, which is something from God, you know, it's a nice full expression of uh, what a person could do with your heart, grab your heart and do that, and play it, and up and down, back and forth, this That's, that's a kind of ability that a good composer or a good artist could have, which is blessed. It's a gift from God. We could play with the heart of the people 
who else could do that? It's, it's something that we have to appreciate that so much. We have to, we have to love that kind of thing. And um, who was the person who asked me a question? Ah, that was you. That was the last one? No, who, who was you? I forget what I was talking about. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think I, I asked you a question already. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, next. <laughs> yes, sir. You my answer to you. What the hell I do is stand is I could be sitting. <laughs> It's not that way. I don't want to blast every time on them. Okay, do you want me to answer your question? No, you answer. No, you don't go out there and decide who But I, I would love to reply to you if you let me. Okay. I used to do a lot of exercise. By the way, I was playing baseball almost all my life until I was. Uh, Maybe even when he came here, I was living in Florida, I was playing baseball every weekend. I, that's what my father wanted me to be, a baseball player. And I was in better shape than now, of course. And um, I, st I still have a little gym in my house. I walk and I do a little, live a little, a little bit, a little bit, not very often, maybe two, three times a week. And I know it's very important, not for the music, not for the trumpet, for the body, for <coughs> any kind of exercise. Of course, it's extremely beneficial for the body. It's, it is. I have nothing against that. But at the same time, you know, I travel almost every day. Man. I have things to do, and I, you know, in a hotel, and sometimes I have to get two, three planes and go there, and sound check, and this, and that, and that. This is what my wife said, you know, well, just watching you playing, I always lose a couple pounds when I play in the game, believe me. And um, I'm just kidding, I could be standing for hours, and I, I, I'm very blessed because my blood pressure is okay. No treaty serious, no cholesterol, no nothing. I'm very, very lucky because my health and my blood pressure is always 120 over 75, always. And um, I'm very lucky, so that's what my doctor said. Man, you are lucky because you are overweight and your health is perfect. I have no problem. That's my wife. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I know we're in the South. It's a South Carolina, and North Carolina is different. They will pick it up. Okay. And, um, I highly recommend everyone, you know, uh, do exercise, yes. And, um, but um, as long as you really keep your breathing in good shape, that's okay. It's not necessary you have to turn the world down. No, 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 no. It's better. I, I always mention a person who I was very lucky. I, I 
took a couple of lessons from him. It was Mr. Yuan Raisi. Yuan, U-A-N, Yuan Raisi, R-A-S-E-Y, Yuan Raisi. He was one of the greatest American trumpet player who ever lived. And I was very lucky, I took a couple of lessons from him, and he always said the same thing to me. He said, Arturo, it's a lot of blowers out there, but very, very few people who could play with finesse. Man, and that really, that those words penetrated my ear, my brain, my heart, my kidneys, my feet, everything until today. I swear to God. And that has been my mission since we met many years ago. To make a little more pretty, learn how to play more pretty, make the most pretty and beautiful sound. That has been my mission. And uh, as old as I get, bigger mouthpiece I use. Some people are looking all the time for something shallower, smaller, something that car. Every time I hear that word, I get angry. I said, what the heck? You don't play a knife. You play a musical instrument. Play loud and ugly is extremely easy. Play soft and pretty like a good singer, that's a little more difficult and need a, a complete different dedication and complete different ideas of how to produce the sound, how to conserve your lips and don't smash them. You know what I mean? The people, sometimes they, they, they think if you play loud and high, oh, it's a hero. And then all my heroes, no one of them, with an exception of one. But my biggest influence in music was Dizzy Gillespie, Rafael Mendes, Timo Fey, Doc Jesus. If you don't know that name, Google, because he was the best ever classical trumpet player who ever walked in the face of earth. Timo Fey, Doc Jesus. He was from Russia. He passed a few years ago. And I was lucky I got a couple of lessons from him too. And um, any of my heroes, Chet Becker, Clifford Brown, Fan Navarro, any of those people play high notes. They don't knife all the way around. They play pretty. They play nice, beautiful. Uh, only Mena, who was, you know, but, but Mena was a kind of different different animal, you know. He was unique. He was a unique kind of person. And um, I really feel sorry about all those Maynard freak and followers that believe that's the only thing. You don't sound like Maynard, you have nothing. I said, man, no, 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 don't believe that. Don't forget Miles and, and a lot of other people. And Chet Becker, for example. Chet Baker never have any idea to play any high or loud, but he played pretty. <laughs>
I'm going to ask you a question better. Why only the the old folks ask questions? The youngers? There's a bunch of old people asking questions. No one of the youngers. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a question, but please think about it. And I hope could be two things. You're shy? No, shy people are so boring, man. You, you, you have no hope in life. Don't be shy. <laughs> the old man, they uh, do the same thing to the old man. The shy people have no future. You have to. And, um, or you're shy, or you're genius. You know everything. You don't need to ask me anything. Congratulations. Beautiful. Sorry, sir. Go ahead. My dad is a trumpet player and uh, started a new job. And my son started very young also. When, when did you know, you personally, when did you know that you were something special? Who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> the day you start believing those things, you stop growing. You're still improving. You're still fighting and trying harder. Any of those things doesn't, don't go to my head because in general, in life, especially when you're a performer, when you go to stage to perform anything, the people who are there that night, they don't care how good or bad you were the night before. You could do something wonderful last night or horrible, who knows? You have to get ready for tonight. And that's the daily mission. If you sleep in the laurels, you, you understand that expression? Yeah. Sleep in the laurels. If you sleep in the laurels and you believe because you did a wonderful concert yesterday, you don't need to warm up today, you don't have to be focused in your things today. Yeah, good luck. But at least with this instrument, you never know. This is let's be used to say, tonight the trumpet gonna win. Tomorrow, maybe, <laughs> maybe you're gonna have a chance to break even. The day after, you're gonna die and the trumpet gonna win for good. <laughs> That's what it is he used to say. And another good friend, a great trumpet player, Dr. Reeson, always he always told me, Toro, the mouthpiece never smile to your face. <laughs> and it's very true. With this, you, you, are, you are the hero when you finish your gig and you sound okay. Before the gig, who knows? Who knows? Because it's a Pandora box trumpet. When you you even if you prepare yourself well and you're ready that when you open the trumpet case in the gate, you know what the trumpet do to you? Pull the middle finger right in your face. <laughs> you say, what? Why is that? You're gonna break it today? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck, stupid idiot. <laughs> That's the way the trumpet talk to you. And then you have to say, honey. Please, take it easy, baby. I love you. Don't do that to me. Come on, come on. You know, I take care of you. You see, I, I, I brought you another day to party. You said that you, you were so dirty and now you're shining. Please, be nice, be nice. Yeah, yeah. That's a daily everything. You know what I mean? And then that has been my philosophy. You know what I believe, to answer your question? That you or anybody else, we could learn something all the time from you never know from who. You, you don't have any idea who could come out to you and give you a little lesson or teach you a little hint about any different things that you never hear before or you thought that was a kind of different way. And we have to be hungry for information. When you're hungry for information, you're going to be in constant growing, improving as an artist. And more ideas or more knowledge you have of everything, better kind of artist you're going to be. Some people, for example, 
When you talk about, uh, are you familiar with the music of Eric Satie? Or are you familiar with, okay, let me play a little piece of music to see if anybody are familiar with this. <laughs> The younger fellow, half an egg, what's that? How are you able to play so high? <laughs> the name of that piece, the name of that. Oh, oh no, the name of that. Mahler Fifth, thank you, sir, thank you. I said, Mahler, what, what are you saying? Oh, how are you able to play so high? High? I didn't play high at all. <laughs> no, that was a middle register of the horn. <laughs> Yeah, but um, yes, you have a question. Tell us about your horn and uh, maybe some of your favorite ones over the years you played. Man, I played a few horns. Not many, not many. I have a few horns. I was very lucky when I came to the U.S. the very first time. The, f the first day I played here, we played in the Carnegie Hall. The very first day. And uh, Mena went there and sang as and Mena Fergus, he gave me one of his horns. Were you with Mena then? At Carnegie Hall? No, no, no. Who you I, with a, a band from Cuba. Tito? No, a band from Cuba. Tito is from New York. <laughs> <laughs> a band from the island of Cuba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, yeah, um, you were mentioning some trumpet player that you um, influenced your music, but you failed to mention um, Louis Armstrong. Did he have any influence on your music, and um, what are your comments about his influence on classical music? I hear Louis Armstrong, and I hear influence, but I, I'm sorry, I, I, can't, I, I can't understand what um, you what are your thoughts about Louis Armstrong's influence on classical music, and did he have any influence on you personally with your music? Yeah. Influence or, or what I think about Louis Armstrong? Yes, that, Is what that, that and did he have any influence on your music? And, oh, you know, you were playing. Oh no, you know, Louis was one of the first, one of the very first, together with King Oliver and Buddy Bolton and uh, Manny Perez. There was a few people in New Orleans, and Louis was the most charismatic one because he's seen and he has a big smile and he got a wonderful personality. And um, he became one of the pioneers of uh, jazz trumpet playing. And if you don't know or you're not familiar with Louis and his playing and his music, of course you're going to have a big hole in your information. And that's what I have been doing all my life, trying to get information. Are you familiar with those names I mentioned? Buddy Bolden, Keen Oliver, Manny Perez, all those people? There was probably the biggest influence and heroes of Louis. Keen, Buddy Bolden, Manny Perez, those three guys were before Louis, and Louis came from those guys. Louis used to play the second trumpet in King Oliver Band, by the way. But his hero, one of his heroes was Buddy Bolden and Manuel Perez, a Spanish-Cuban descendant. He was one of the 
pioneer of the trumpet playing in New Orleans. I'm talking about beginning of 1910, 1915, or something like that. And um, and the influence of on, on classical music, you meant you say something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. As I said before, I'm going to repeat again. I listen to everything. I am a huge fan of Dizzy Gillespie, but um, I love Maurice Andre, and I love uh, Timo Fey, Doug Caesar. One of the pieces I learned by ear many, many years ago was the Alexander Arutunian trumpet concerto. That was uh, recorded for Timo Fey by Timo Fey many years ago, and I learned that recording by ear. When I recorded it was the London Symphony later on, I don't even need the music because I, I knew the piece by heart and I still love it and I play once in a while. You know, when I practice, to answer your question, when I practice, I don't even think about any specific style of music. <clears throat> Always, when I practice, I concentrate in the production of sound, the control of different articulations, the tonguing, the double tonguing, triple tonguing, uh, chromatics, SPL, all of the above, everything. And one of my books, I'm going to always have in my stand there at home, it's an Arma book. Some students they are so misled or misinformed about that when they came to my house for a lesson, they see the album there, say, they look at me and say, Album? They say, Yeah, is something wrong with that? Yeah, you know how we call that? The Bible. <laughs> yeah, if you're not familiar with that, Good luck, my friend, because that's what Maurice practiced, that's what Rafael Mendes practiced, that's what Sergei Nakaryakov practiced, and what is the Maurice Andre practice, and what a Clifford Brown practice. By the way, I'm a very good friend of Clifford Brown Jr., and the widow, she passed away, unfortunately, rest in peace, but she was a very good dear friend of mine, Clifford Widow. And she told me a lot of stories of Clifford practicing Arban. And Clifford, biggest hero, you know who was? Rafael Mendes. He was crazy about Rafael Mendes. He talked about him all the time, and he listened to his recording, and he practiced on the Arban. And some people want a shortcut in this business. Hell no, forget about shortcuts. It doesn't exist any shortcuts in this business. It's only one way. A strong discipline, hard dedication, big passion, and a lot of discipline, discipline. And you know, you have to have that commitment and that you take it so seriously because you can you could take music in two different ways. When you take a music as a hobby, Beautiful, congratulations, that's going to be so good for you, for your soul, for your life, for your brain. It's wonderful. But if you decide that music is going to be your profession, you're going to, that's going to be your way of make your living, all the way, your living and your living, both ends, it's a completely different picture there. You really have to take it extremely seriously. Otherwise, you're going to be in the middle of a big bunch that they have a day job and they play on New Year's Eve and maybe Thanksgiving or, you know, you know what I mean? Otherwise, if you don't take this with a lot of passion and love and serious dedication, forget about it and belongs to this group. They have more fun than professional struggling. That is not a good life. This is a fun life because you're playing for fun and you enjoy doing your thing, but don't quit your day job because you need to bring some food to your table, you know? And this is fine, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with this. But this group over here is not that much fun.
is more dedication. Dedication is always room for another one. Always, always. But you have to earn that room. That you're going to fall out of the sky. You have to end it. And don't complain about it. You go to people where I live in Los Angeles, the people say, no, when you do the recording, they always bring the same people. They say, of course, the people nail it. Oh, always. <laughs> That's the reason they bring them and not you. Because when <laughs> they give you a chance, you screw the recording. And they have to erase everything and they have to bring another guy to replace the BS you did. And then you made those people in the production lose a lot of money. That's the reason they didn't call you again. And stop, you know, complaining about those good guys that got a strong dedication and they go there every morning and nail it. And I promise you, those people who weren't drinking and having drunk the night before, they were on bed early to get up very early and warm up properly to be ready to nail it. Because it's a com com competition war. The whole world is a competition. The opportunities are there, but you have to fight to get that position because there's 2,500 people aspiring to get that chair. You could be the owner, but you have to learn it. Earn it, I mean, you have to earn it. You could be the owner of that chair, but you have to earn it. And how you earn it? With that strong discipline, dedication. You have to feel horrible when you go to stage to play a concert and you don't feel 100% ready to do it because you was doing something else. Something else? No, this is your first priority. This is your bread and butter. This is your pride. This is your reputation. This is your uh, principle. This is the way to bring food to your family. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, sir. What to you? What was your favorite trumpet that you ever played? John Burr, Dizzy Gillespie. No trumpet. What was what was your favorite trumpet that you? Oh, the instrument. Oh, I'm sorry, the trumpet player. No, the instrument. Man, you know what I always said. It's not the arrow, it's the Indian. <laughs> you have a trumpet? You play? Yes, sir. You have it there? Yes, sir. Bring it on.
<laughs> I love the Chinese. They want a few other pops. That's the one I love. Look like this. Oh, this is too good. That's the Chinese one. <laughs> See that answer my that answer your question is now the arrow is the Indian behind the thing. <laughs> Any horn is good. By the way, we have to produce the sound. Any horn produce any sound at all. If you blow, this is what you're gonna have. We have to make the sound, we have to produce the sound. What the horn does is amplify and organize the sounds we produce with our lips. You copy that? Yes sir, yes sir. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, this is my hand. It's like they call it bossing. I don't even know that thing. Bossing. I don't bossing. I play in the mouthpiece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Sir, I, I, there, I saw we were on YouTube where you were at the end of Newport before you start playing, you were doing like Rhythm of the World or something. Yeah. And I heard you go down to like the pedal C. Yeah. Before you, was that kind of get you, your lips where you felt they needed to be or just kind of just. No, that, that's the first pedal I played today, and I was hitting a good F there. You hear the F? Yeah. You got some well, you kind of that, pitch? You that when the band started. Like, yeah. <laughs> you oh. You, you know what? I swear to God, I don't have any specific routine that I follow. You know? It's a principle, no routine. The principle is you have to start easy. Don't be crazy to start in the very beginning. <clears throat> extremely loud, extremely high, or extremely low either. You know what's my philosophy? I always spend a lot of time with the G of a second line within the staff. Mm -hmm. This G. spelling guide yeah. that's my guide note okay then I play that note in any kind of volumes any kind of uh, dynamics and all kind of articulation something like this
pages to play all this variation and things and you know because you're showing up in the neighborhood and you're uh, you're showing up your good friend and you come play and, and they never touch the first couple of pages and the bread and butter of Arban is in the first part of the book it's not in the end the end is such that no prepare you for nothing <laughs> Don't give you any kind of good preparation. The preparation, the bread and the meat and rice and beans is in the first part of the book. One of the lesson, lesson 46, page, I think the page 11 or something. consistency in your playing, you understand what I mean? And uh, all the things are uh, clear. Are you familiar everybody with Herbert Lincoln Clark? Yeah, he wrote four different books. Most of the people are familiar with the number two, technical studies, but he also have the elementary, technical, uh, characteristic, and calisthenics. He got four different books. The number two is the most popular <coughs> for a reason. It's an extremely good book. One of the things, the lesson number one, he asks you to do a list from eight to sixteen times in one breath. The same.
then lesson number three is that book. I'm going to pray for you. I come out with a variation of this. The original go like this. Okay, this is a variation I invented. No, sorry. send me fresh ideas <laughs> because all my ideas are burning already <laughs> no no to improve you know to be honest let me put this over here because I don't want to forget that this is what it helped me muscles when I'm improvising I close my eyes and what I see when I visualize it's a, it's a keyboard I want to be sure the notes I play, they're okay with that chord. Don't necessarily have to be on that chord, but I have to be, I have to work good with that chord. Chord could have five sound, for example. Some notes do like this and go around and get this and this and together and this and that and that and those kind of combinations are good. Some other notes do like this. Push this one and that's horrible. And that happens a lot of times you hear the people pretending they are improvising, they are not familiar with the core. They don't know what they're doing, when where they're coming from and where they want to go. And um, it's not like this, it's not guessing. Maybe you're lucky in something extremely easy, you guess a couple of phrases here and there. But uh, normally, if you're playing a tune like Giant Steps, mm, good luck if you're guessing. If you're not familiar with the chord, you're going to sound like, you know what? Cherokee, are you familiar with that tune? Yeah, the, the A session is piece of cake. Yeah, when you get to the bridge, oh, oh. <laughs> you better know where you're going because you're going to sound so funny. And uh, maybe going to happen to you what happened to Charlie Parker when he was very young. He came to the a jam session in the club in New York. And somebody called Cherokee. He never played that tune before. He was navigating okay in the first half of the song. I remember when the bridge came out. Every note he was trying to play sound ugly, and then the drummer who watched it, he was a bad person. I don't want to say any dirty word, but he was a bad person. He took the symbol and threw it to him. <laughs> The symbol of the drum. He put the sax in the case and then he went home 
for a long time and he locked himself in, right inside the room until he learned the Cherokee in the 12 different keys. When he came out of the room, he was already Mr. Charlie Parker. He realized he needed to learn a couple of things before his next jam session. But um, my recommendation, how to improve, how to improvise well, how to really I don't want to do that because I'm going to start to lose it here. And then I'm going to be bad for my business over here. That's okay. That's a symbol girl. It's a kind of boring. I, I'm going to wrap because I, I see two couple of people. Here. Oh, that means there's a, I mean, reiterative. Practice the core in the piano. Somebody else have another question? Yes. Oh, uh, I don't know, man. Because I'm, I started playing music, uh, playing gigs, in uh, 1961. Man, that's how many? 54 years, no? 54 years ago, I started playing. I never stopped. In 54 years, I mean, I played so many gigs. I played so many different things. You know? One of the things I did, I really, I really, in, enjoy very much that I play a trumpet solo in the very last recording of Mr. Chairman of the Boer, Mr. Franz Sinatra. That, that, was, that was a big shift for me. And yes, sir. Another question. Yes. Would you improv, do you tend to think perhaps vertically or horizontally? And when you do, do you always know the relationship of the note you're playing to the chord of the moment? Man, you're so smart, but that's, that's too deep for me. <laughs> you are you are a ge geometric? Are you an architect or something? You you know? Yeah, yeah. You you know about ge ge geometry, geometry, and all those things. I I, I didn't went to school, man. <laughs> I I improvise, you know, improvisation. This is let's be used to say that improvisation is like painting a picture. Mixing color, creating uh, contrast, contrast, creating images and, and, and uh, uh, dynamics and then. And a good add to that for me, in the classical music, they call thin and variation. Are you familiar with that thing? The thin and variation, for example.
of different melody, different themes, and different approach of orchestrations, different instrumentation. You know what I mean? And the, everything that knowledge came from the piano. Oh yeah, you know, to be honest, man, I, I hate this. I don't I, I don't wanna try it. I didn't draw the piano. What is oh my microphone? I've been before all the time? I don't know. Sorry. Anybody familiar with this? play a ballad? I I will. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I thought that was supposed to wrap. Maybe another, maybe another 20 minutes if you want. Another 20 minutes? If you want. <laughs> <laughs> you can stop. You can stop. <laughs> 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 Is that okay? Okay, let me play something else. Okay. 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 All right.
used to do it mean in old man. Plenty more. Uh, by the way, uh, don't do what I do because I smoke a lot. I smoke cigar all my life since I, since I was 40 years old. I don't recommend that to no one. But nobody's perfect, you know. I have to do something wrong, otherwise I'm gonna be a kind of a San Duval. <laughs> I smoke cigars, I'm sorry man. I drink Cuban coffee and cigars. I love it. I can't wait to get back to the hotel and light a wine waiting for me there. I started this morning and I have has way. And now it's going to get horrible, stinky, so bad. When you let it there for a while, you come back and light it again. Say, wow, where you been? The toilet where? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so sorry, I love it. Yes, sir. What is your thing Man, whatever the people like it, to be honest, could be anything. But I, I, that my, one of my priority is to grab the soul of the audience and let them know whatever I'm saying is not BS. It's from my heart. You know what I mean? Something sincere is what I'm feeling. Is what I'm trying with the non trying. Sorry, this is what I'm sharing with you my feeling, my true story. And sometimes people are so stupid, they think they can fake that. They think they can fool the audience. No, never underestimate the intelligence, the intelligence, intelligence, how do you say it? Intelligence, intelligence of the people. The people know who's the real deal and who's faking. And what whatever you're doing is, is from your heart, or is something you practice and study and prepare technically flawless, but feeling less. And it's a lot of the people out there too. You you see they technically wise, they play so beautiful. Man, yeah, that's that's beautiful, that's great. But you have to play a little melody and convince me that you're expressing and you're giving me your feelings, your real feelings. You understand? That's what I really please my that's the reason I I'm a huge fan of Doc Jesus. When I hear this, I'm gonna play for you. I say, oh my goodness, that's so pretty, that's so beautiful. This is a little part, I hope I remember, of uh, Antonia from Russia.
Your applause doesn't feel sincere. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I had a big mouth. I, 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 that's one of my biggest problems. I say what I feel. Sometimes you have to be a hypocrite and you you have to say what the people want to hear. That's my problem. I'm never going to be a good businessman. I'm never going to be a politician. I'm never going to be bullshitted because I say what I mean. And I mean what I say. You like it? Well, if you don't, I'm sorry. You know what's the door. Just kidding. Okay. Yes, please. A young person. Oh, the faces of the people on the place of the ground. <laughs> when the people start to do, uh, uh, say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Now, you know, that's a very intelligent question. It's very smart. That's very true. It's, it's, it's a long process. Unfortunately, some people are more mature at John, John age. I believe music-wise, I, I wasn't mature when I was younger, you know. I guess it's several reasons, you know, as I could use it as an excuse. I was living in Cuba, I didn't, I didn't have any opportunity, no record label, no places where to play, and then when they give me a chance to play something, I want to play a couple million notes where belongs three notes. You know what I mean? In the place where belongs three notes, play three notes. Don't try to play two millions because they're not going to sound right. But I always was in this spot and I want to demonstrate that I could play. And I lived with that pressure for so many years living in Cuba. When I go out, I didn't play in six months, nowhere. And then I went and played in uh, Montreux Jazz Festival in Switzerland, where all the best musicians in the world play. When they give me a bar, oh my goodness. <laughs> I want to put the trumpet in the oscarizer and the, the blender. And I went, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. But we always could improve our speech as, as an artist, you know, our performance, I think. We always have room to improve it, to make it better, to make a more internal improvisation of playing more poetic, more poetic, you know what I mean? More lyrical, you know, beautiful. But one more time, the, the sound is very important, man. We have to cultivate good sound because even a single melody with a pretty sound it's good have a lot of emotion a lot, a lot of things you know that grab the soul of the people which is the most important thing when you're able to do that you're gonna have a good possibility to get a good audiences where you go you don't wanna have too many empty houses because really people want to hear that thing, you know. And the people notice right away who's been drinking and having fun and no preoccupation at all to improve your act. And the people notice who's really taking care of your thing. They notice right away. You know, you can't no fake it that. And um, the desire, to answer your question, the desire to improve is what really forces you to improve. You shouldn't be too happy when you have a bad performance. If you really play bad and you play, you know, you were out of shape and you were trying to do this and that and you couldn't do it, because you have lack of skill, because you didn't 
develop those skills because of lack of your interest and discipline to do it, you should feel very sad. I said, I cannot let that happen again. Next gig, I must be ready. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I have to be ready. That's the reason you see me like an idiot. The people laugh at me in the airport, places or where. I go with my wife to the restaurant, I didn't see him there. Because I'm going to feel miserable if I want to do something like that. something that I did, and then my finger doesn't respond. I'm going to feel bad. What I do to don't feel bad? Take care of business. It's, it's, it has to be like a draw. It has to be like a vice. Instead of use uh, weird substance, use music. You know what a piano has been doing for me? One of the reasons I'm still married for 40 years with the same woman is because of the piano. When I'm home and she says something or we've got any kind of little problem or whatever, we start to argue or something, you know what I do? I say, honey. You know what that means? I'm out. Honey, keep me, keep me five. I see you in five. What are you going to do? Give me five. I see you five. Thank you. 
They made a movie, a fiction movie, it was two hours, on HBO in the year 2000, called For Love or Country. There are two rules in the one story. For Love or Country, there are two rules in the one story. It's a, a movie, two-hour movie. By the way, no, it's not because it's about me and my family. It's a wonderful movie, very well done. By the way, I... I won the Emmy for the score I wrote. You know, the Emmy is like an Oscar for television. I won, I won the Emmy for the score I wrote for that movie. And um, I highly recommend that you watch it because it's, it's very well done, very good, good. And the guy who played me is okay. The Cuban fellow by the name of Andy Garcia. He's okay, yeah, he's good. Uh, Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me. He was first. Yes, sir. You're talking about playing chords on the piano. Yeah. I taught it and I played. Yeah. Some people talk and don't play shit. Yeah. I didn't play that too. Mm. I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> what about that? Thank <laughs> you. 
That answer your question? I love my friend, Gary Grant, there in LA said, Any question? <laughs> yes. Did you guys, I saw the video you did for the car today, the interviews, That was in my house. <laughs> that, that was funny. <laughs> Even more. To be honest, they was working there in the house for maybe half a day. I only participated in the thing in the very end, you know, a little bit. They, they did most of, the, of their work. I was there in my studio taking care of things and smoking my cigar and drinking coffee. And... But it's funny, man. It's funny. It's very funny. James is so funny, man. He got a great sense of humor. He's been smart and very fast, very quick, man. You know. I like his personality a lot. Yeah. And Wayne, it is what it is, you know. He's a monster, monster player. He played a lead in my big band, by the way. I'm not stupid. <laughs> I, I use the best guy in town. The big band I have in the lake. Oh, it's scary, man. It's scary. It's scary. It, uh, those musicians are so good, man. They're so good. So well prepared, you know, so professional. They really go to the studio, man, and these people are ready to kill it. It's amazing. That that's a good example for all of us. When you live in the city of Los Angeles. You could have a chance, but when they give you the chance, you must be ready. And I mean ready. Because impress this guy is impossible. <laughs> if, you, if you pretend you're going to impress those guys, yeah, that's going to be very difficult. But at least do a good job. And then if you do a good job and you're an okay person, you're okay, you're nice and friendly. Don't come out also with a kind of a arrogance kind of attitude or whatever because pfft, you're not going to be able to, to make one gig. But if you are friendly with the people and you are a good musician, you're smart to behave correctly every time you are in a different situation, of course you're going to have a chance. Of course, because they, all of them, get there in different era. I get there six years ago, and somebody made a you know, stupid old man there told me, oh man, you know what, this is so crowded here with trumpet players. And I laugh and look at him and say, you know what, I'm not a trumpet player, I'm a comedian. <laughs> I'm going to make my living here as a comedian. He said, are you? Of course, I was pulling his head. I was making fun of stupid old man. He, he said, well, this is so crowded over here, so many trumpet players. And I didn't reply that, that. That's what I told him. No, no, no. I don't hear thinking about going to make my living playing the trumpet. No, no, no. I'm going to be a comedian. Spanish, has Spanish, has, you know, like Paul Rodriguez, one of those guys, you know. And the other one, what's his name? Uh, 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 the guy who got a, he used to have a TV show. George, George Lopez, one of those, one of those guys, you know. Hey, what the, the boss out. <laughs> Another question. Jeff, sit down. Sit down, Jeff. Yes.
I never heard that before. I swear. Those people speak English, you know. Can you imagine me trying to deal with those kind of technical stuff that doesn't know my profession? But anyway, if you love music and you play the trumpet, you love music, you love the trumpet. F 
the praises, man. Do you think with, without, with this, without this, hey, say better. Yeah, yeah, man, of course. Chet Becker lost his teeth and he was playing for a while with no teeth. I swear to God. Oh, he sounds something like that. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. 